This is Moments with Foo with James Foo Torres, better known as Foo, the show that takes you around the world to share interviews with some of the most successful and relevant people on the planet, hear their stories, and get the most important business lessons they have learned on their road to success, and get exclusive advice on how to implement their success into your life and business. Moments with Foo is brought to you by the Strategic Advisor Board and your host, Foo. Welcome to Moments with Fu. I'm your host, James Fu Torres, we're just called Fu. Hence the name of the show. Today I have Michael Perez, or Mikey Perez, like I'll call him. And uh, this guy of many talents. I mean, he has magazines, he does SEO, he does websites. I mean, who, what does this guy doesn't do? Now, in his podcast, uh, we're going to be talking about hair loss, hair growth, treatments, myths, facts, all that. And he's a returning guest. Uh, that we were talking about completely different things, but uh, be, I'm happy to have you here. So before getting into things, uh, Mikey, how are you? I'm so good, brother. It's so good to have you, to be back on your show, to be talking to you. And yeah, the stuff we talk about is just wild. We'll talk about tech, we'll talk about news, and we'll talk about hair. So let's do it. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Um, let's uh, let's uh, kick it up with a quick introduction about yourself and yeah. whatever you're focusing on right now. <laughs> yeah, and, and I'll, I'll tie in where I'll kind of, this might be a little confusing because uh, James and I have been friends for a long time. You and I have been friends. And um, if you understand the bigger picture, kind of all these conversations have a common denominator. So. Um, I initially started in the tech world. Um, I graduated in math and computer science, so I've just been coding, developing apps. And then I got into the news space. So I've been building news publications, um, doing some notable works in terms of uh, search engine optimization. And this is all, so I, I, I founded a handful of companies and they're kind of, they work in isolation, but at times they also work cohesively together to provide an all encompassing service to those who need our services. Um, and this part of my first five year plan. So I, I plan to segue and leverage the startups that I'm building now to head into VC. And my next five year plan would be to study human aging. So that's ultimately where the end goal is. And so I'm currently doing biomedical engineering, studying online. And, um, you know, from tech, it's all a leverage point to where I can work with founders who are doing some incredible engineering and innovative problem solving. And then from there, I'm hopefully I'm going to fall in love with a particular company that's working on the biological processes of aging. And then I want to invest myself there. So that's kind of how all these conversations tie in. I love this and uh, that's exactly i mean i wouldn't say exactly but very 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 similar uh, than my focus instead of the tech side which i love getting uh, getting into the weeds of, of the tech and being uh knowing about the latest technology being up to date with tech and thankfully i have friends like mikey here that help me stay stay up to date with things and other friends i'm also very big into the self-development the 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 anti-aging like being as yeah. healthy and as productive as efficient as possible for as long as possible and uh, so that's why uh, you know I'm, I'm 30 years old i'm if you can tell like i'm not really losing like a whole lot of hair maybe man like, you look like, great you so, look great but, yeah uh, but i want to have a yeah. beard i want to have more hair i want right. to be young and good looking for as long as i can and feeling good so that's why uh, i love talking about this yeah topics. yeah so um, it, you really want to, it, this is a very interesting conversation because it's this, the conversation or, or the passion that I have is not necessarily about eating healthier. It's not about living for a little longer. It's about understanding the underlying mechanisms to what cause cells to age, to lose their function, to become senescent or cancerous and learning how to look at aging as a biological clock and ultimately look at aging as a disease. And, you know, before we head into the specifics of hair loss, um, it's kind of hard to predict where our focuses are going because we've evolved to rationalize death. We've evolved to see the beauty in death. And that was the best way to cope with the process is to find the beauty in it. Given you know, our, our limited ability to do something about it, no one has escaped death. Everyone who's born has died, um, except for the people who are currently living. But um, 
I, I do think that as we technologically advance and as the pace of technological growth is exponential, um, certain conversations that we've evolved to pacify should resurface and we should have serious considerations. We shouldn't see death as beautiful. We should see death as a disease. In fact, some biologists or some scientists call death telomere shortening disease. Um, you know, that's one way to look at aging as the shortening of the telomeres and the loss of cellular uh, information or the loss of cellular function over time. But, um, you know, the question, you know, it, we are also as technology evolves, we're passing the baton of life, of what it means to be alive from biology to technology. And we're coming to realize that if you study a bird and you look at it abstractly, you can create materials that don't allow you to get from one street to another or even from one continent to another. You can create materials that allow you to get from one planet to another. And this is certainly how I think we're going to start viewing our own body. And I know this almost sounds like science fiction, cyborgism, cyborgism, but we're quickly starting to realize that our heart is not necessarily the best material to keep us alive. In fact, it's the, it's the least ideal material dictated by evolution. And if we can make something that's fault tolerant, that works really well, that can deal with all sorts of problems, in fact, we're going to start realizing that all of our body parts are, are not ideal for keeping us alive. And then we start heading into the philosophical world of what does it mean to be you, right? We thought it was your heart. Now we think it's your mind. But when you isolate the mind and you, let's just say, you know, you can break up the brain to the compartments. If you, just, if, you were to, um, if you were to incapacitate the prefrontal cortex, would you still be you? We'd all say yes. The amygdala, we would all say yes. And you go through every one of those compartments, it still gets a little philosophical of what consciousness is, who we are. These are really simple questions with really hard answers. But I think once we do answer those questions, the idea of what it means to be alive, the idea of, uh, of, of how to live forever would become something that's a lot more tangible. Now, that's a little bit of an esoteric philosophical conversation, but pulling it down here is the surface level of dermatology uh, and, and, and the implications of aging are things we try to avoid. And hair is certainly one of them. I think it's a $3 billion industry and it's almost a taboo subject as well, at least for men, to discuss um, hair loss, whether it's androgenetic alopecia, whether it's alopecia areata, universalis, totalis. Um, these are all different forms of hair loss, but I think we're here today to discuss about just male pattern hair loss, like just guys getting older and losing their hair and what they can do about it. it, it yeah, are, are we on the same page? Yes, yes. And, and there, just to give a little bit of context to, to people, uh, this, this conversation started because I, I decided that I, I wanted to grow a beard because I saw, I saw Ryan Pineda, a uh, big uh, real estate influencer, that he had, like, Filipino, less hair than me. Like, he didn't even have this. And, you know, he tried a bunch of things, and then he said that he broke it down to, well, hey, biotin and, and uh, some, like, taking biotin through, like, through the mouth and then uh, doing minoxidil. So then I bought that. And I started doing it. Then uh, Mike here like texting me with a lot of stuff and. Uh, and oh then, bullshit! Like, red flag! Yeah. Red flag! Yeah, <laughs> yeah. and then you know I, I've been doing it. I've been doing it for a month yeah. now, uh, and uh, you know I don't know. I don't know what to think about it, but uh, we're we're trying whatever. Well, here we uh, are. Hopefully, hopefully we can get a little closer to the right direction. So first of all, I want to say is uh, you know Ryan Panetta. I'm sure he's a great guy. I don't, I don't know you know, he, and I'm sure he's well intentioned as well. And in the broad broader sense in the industry, 95% um, of the stuff you're told is complete and utter bullshit. Um, it's a snake oil industry, it's a scamming industry, it's a horrible place to be, and especially people who are generally looking to solve, you know, hair loss, instead of being told to shave their head, instead of being told to walk it off, to toughen up, or instead of being told to do some stupid things that don't actually work, there are a few things that really do work. Um, so yeah, I'm happy to first. I'm happy to discuss the underlying mechanisms first and foremost of how hair loss happens, and then we can discuss what medications work, what medications are FDA approved, and, and really, there's especially now more than ever, there seems to be a lot at your disposal with some interesting technologies also ahead. And apparently, in the research industry, every every cure is only five years ahead, and we they've been saying that for like 50 years. But um, th there actually are some pretty good stuff. So uh, yeah, do you want to dive right into the process of how hair loss works, at least androgenetic based? Definitely, let's get into it. Yeah. So uh, we have androgen receptors, and okay, so you have testosterone in your blood, and it's called free flow testosterone. And this testosterone gets picked up by enzymes, which convert that convert to protein. 
proteins. Now you have three enzymes. You have three enzymes um, that pick up your free flow testosterone. You have an enzyme called alpha A reductase. You have an enzyme called alpha B reductase, and you have an enzyme called aromatase. So alpha A and alpha B reductase will convert your DHT, your your sorry, your testosterone to DHT, dehydrotestosterone. And then your aromatase enzyme will convert your testosterone into estradiol, which is estrogen. That's as simple as the, in terms of the underlying mechanisms, that's what happens. You have testosterone flowing in your blood, some of us more than others, and as you grow older, that testosterone increases. And then you produce DHT from two enzymes, and you produce... Oh, sorry, decreases. Decreases, okay, you're 100% right. I was, I was, you know, yes. like, I see all these yeah. people getting in treatments and things as they grow older. So sorry, like, sorry, sorry, your testosterone decreases, your testosterone decreases, but your hair loss does mature, and we can talk about why. So you have those three enzymes, and your estrogen is needed, your DHT is needed, especially for like puberty and maturity and growth, but, uh, and that's just how the world works. Now, there are initially, so all the hair loss drugs that actually do work were discovered by mistake. So the first drug that was discovered was, no, now it's known commercially as Propecia, but the, the, the chemical compound is called Finasteride. And Finasteride now for Propecia is diagnosed in one milligram um, dosages, but it was initially diagnosed in five milligram dosages to treat something called BPH, benign prostate hyperplasia. So people who are getting older, who have an inflamed prostate, they take this medication and they can reduce the size of their prostate. Um, and then one of the side effects that were noticed was that people were regrowing their hair. So doctors said, hey, let's lower the dosage to one milligram, call it Propecia, and repackage it. Merck is the company that originally came up with the, with the product. Now, what finasteride does is it blocks alpha B reductase. It blocks that second enzyme that converts testosterone to DHT. And what we've learned in clinical studies was that if you block alpha A reductase, not very much happens at all to your hair. You block alpha B reductase, a lot seems to happen with the hair. And then if you block both with another drug called dutasteride, there's balloons, I don't know where the balloons are coming from, but I think, I think Riverside is approving. Um, if you block both, if you block alpha B reductase, what we've noticed is a tremendous increase in, in, in hair regrowth or the stoppage of hair loss. Unfortunately, dutasteride is not FDA approved. It's a little more of an aggressive drug. And it stops alpha A reductase from creating DHT, which is DHT your brain needs and your body needs. Um, what we've learned is, as far as we know, alpha, blocking the enzyme that does create the hair loss DHT um, seems to be something that a lot of us are fine living without. It's needed more for puberty, but for the most part, we're seeing that most people seem fine without it. Um, and then there are side effects, which we can talk about. But the, the, and then when you block, what happens when you block the, the, when you block the enzymes that create DHT, you still have more free flow testosterone flooding through your third enzyme, which is estradiol. So when you block your your, your DHT, you, when you block your alpha B reductase, what you end up doing is creating more estrogen because there's more free flow testosterone to be connected to, to be converted to estrogen. And this is why one of the side effects for taking finasteride is gynecomastia, is you're seeing like just just guys boobies just get bigger um, and they get fatter. So um, it's a very small subset, but but it's 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 a real thing. So. Anyways, that's the underlying mechanisms. And then that DHT flows to your scalp and it attacks your androgen receptors. And it doesn't necessarily cause your hair to fall out. What it does is it causes your hair to miniaturize and it reduces the growth phase, the antigen phase of your hair cycle. So for all the technical reasons, I know we got a little nerdy here, but at least we understand what's going on. And we've also come to learn that DHT is not the sole culprit. If you block all your DHT, you're not growing your hair back. It's not the sole culprit, it plays an active role in hair loss, but there's other stuff like proteins called PGD2, which are responsible for inflammation, and there's studies done that shown that people who, like, people who are completely bald have a much higher degree of PGD2 in their scalp as opposed to your average person. Now, there are some people who have tons of testosterone, and they have a full head of hair, so why is that? It's because their androgen receptors are not susceptible to DHT. So DHT doesn't attack the follicles. It's a bit of a shady area. We don't entirely understand the mechanisms, but we do have some idea of what works and what doesn't. And now, 
so the first FDA approved drug is is Proscar, five milligrams finasteride to treat BPH, which works with hair loss. The second drug that's treated is from Johnson and Johnson, and it's called Minoxidil. And um, it, it's called um, Rogaine uh, commercially. So the thing about Rogaine is, uh, it, it's not. Think of like your house is flooding, and you're just buying bigger buckets. So what it does actually, it increases, and it's so again this drug as well and it's applied topically, but this drug as well was initially discovered to treat something called hypertension. And another side effect is people saying, hey, I'm growing hair. And what, it, what, we, what we speculate happens, what we hypothesize as an educated guess happens is when you apply Rogaine or minoxidil to your scalp, what it does is increases the blood flow and it increases the potassium flow to your scalp. So we suspect that increased potassium flow plus since the I know this sounds weird, but since the DHT is moving at a faster pace, it's harder for it to bind to the follicle, and this is why you can reduce the, the DHT attacking the follicles, you have better hair growth. So these are the two FDA drugs, and honestly, these are the only two that works. Saw palmetto. So I know you mentioned biotin and you mentioned saw palmetto. I don't, I don't know if you mentioned saw palmetto. Saw palmetto is a natural drug. It's a natural compound. Um, it's possible it does work. But the thing is, you don't know how much to take. You don't know what you're doing to your body. You really don't know anything. You know why? Because it's a natural compound and you can't patent natural compounds. And when you can't patch in natural compounds, there's no incentive to do FDA when anyone else can use the drug. So this is why, unfortunately, a lot of natural supplements could possibly work in theory to solve many problems, not just this problem. But the reason why we don't have good data and data is absolutely crucial is because there's no incentive to pour tens of billions of dollars into research into something that you cannot take control over. Unfortunately, it's how the world works and it's horrible that we're creating synthesized chemicals and we have natural chemicals that can possibly help. Now, the problem with sal, sal palmetto does block alpha B reductase, that enzyme that creates DHT that causes hair loss. But people have taken it and you really don't see results and it's even really hard to gauge how these things work. So that's the really long conversation of the underlying mechanisms. And um, now, what, how the industry has been going on for such a long time is that you, know, you take finasteride and it works, and you take minoxidil and it works, and you do one last thing, you take an antifungal shampoo called ketoconazole. And those things work together really well. I think in America, the 1% ketoconazole is off the counter, and the 2% you need a prescription. Sorry, don't quote, I can check. But I know in Canada, um, it's, 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 it's commercially marketed as Nizorol. So Nizorol, America, um, yeah. And it works so really, really. You're, you're yeah. saying, uh, you know, after explaining all these things, you're saying for if, if based on all this research that you've done, you kind of boiling down to these three components, basically the finasteride, the minoxidil, and the keto. Non non-surgical. There's no, non-surgical, non-surgical, and then we could talk about one more thing that's not FDA approved, but FDA cleared, which people tend to conflate and they're really different. Um, so there's FDA cleared low light laser therapy. So pretty much shining, um, shining light at 679 nanometers uh, with a wavelength of 679 nanometers shows to stimulate hair growth and other growth factors. Um, but FDA approved if you're not taking finasteride, everything else is really secondary, at the very least. And women can take finasteride, but um, women can take rogue. Now, yes, that's non-surgical. So your first line of attack, and, and I recommend you do things in isolation. So when you just take finasteride, and one of the biggest issues with people who take finasteride is some of them get off the drug right away because they start losing more hair and they freak out. And in yeah, like some people have incredible shedding and they freak out and it's called in, in, in technical terms and in, in medical terms, it's called telogen effluvium, shock loss, also known as shock loss. And the irony is, is that's the best result you want to have. So your hair goes through three phases, antigen, telogen, and catagen. Okay. When your hair is in telogen phase, it's sleeping. 
so that it can go back. And so catagen is when it's preparing for antigen. So we can keep out catagen, but let's just talk about telogen and antigen. Telogen is your hair sleeps. So all, all over the head on your all over the hair on your head, I, I you know I think about 20% or 10% of your hair is always constantly in sleeping phase. You can't tell it because it's constantly cycling, but your hair sleeps and it regrows. Now when you take medication, what you're doing is you're altering the health of your hair. So your hair is midway through growth, it's a miniaturized follicle, and it's aware that it now has enough, let's just call it medication or strength to grow a much healthier hair, right? What does it do? It can't grow, it can't change the shaft diameter of your hair midway through growth. What it does is it falls out, goes to sleep for three months, and then it comes out much stronger. And that means that your medication, that you're a good responder to finasteride. So this is why doctors tell you, you really can't see, oh, and I have to preface all of this, that I'm not a doctor. So speak to your doctor to get any information. Don't do any life-changing decisions. Obviously you can't get these medications without speaking to your doctor, but um, I'm not a medical professional. I'm just a guy with a stupid opinion. So keep that in mind. Yeah, so disclaimer, now, disclaimer, hey, disclaimer which should probably have happened 20, 20 minutes yeah. earlier, but. <laughs> <laughs> we started, but it doesn't matter. We're yeah. here now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, so what are we talking about? Exactly. So, um, when you take something that's working, you generally can go through an element of shock loss. Some more than others. And some cannot experience any shock loss, but their body will be a pretty good responder anyways. Um, it's a gradation, and it's really hard to tell. And what I like to recommend people is that you do things in isolation. Why? If you all of a sudden one day decide to go on you know, Propecia, Minoxidil, Ketoconazole, everything, and do Tasteride, Topical, and Oral Minoxidil, which we can talk about, and you do all of this together, and then you start seeing good results, what happens now is you're locked into all of these results. You don't know which one is the one that's working, right? And what you want to do is do a minimally invasive process. You want to be slow and steady wins the race. Find something, try one thing, try it out for three, four months, you can probably notice if you're getting good results, you see a reduction of shedding, um, you see an increased growth, all that stuff is signs that something's working, you stay on it for a few months and then you can try something else and see how your body responds. Because think of it, anytime, anytime we do any of this stuff, until we have something much better that's down the road, um, you're taking this for life. You can't just take this for two months and get off it, right? Because your DHT is going to go back and attack your follicles. So yeah, I mean, uh, that's 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 roughly the process and there's still a lot, a lot more to say and we could talk about low light laser therapy i don't know too much about it but i have done some reading um to be honest these it's the low light laser therapy with specific diodes or specific products are fda cleared which means that it doesn't go through the rigorous process of clinical trials and whatnot but i think i believe one thing it asserts is that it's not necessarily harmful and that there's some marginal benefits or there's some way to quantify success, but it doesn't have anything, it's nothing like FDA approved. Um, people do go through low light laser therapy, they buy the caps and stuff. Um, it's really just a dot, like very cheap lasers. It's really just, so you know, the light you see, any light, any color you notice is because it's light reflecting into your eyes at a very specific wavelength. If you use 679 nanometers light, it seems to have benefits. People do other stuff like dermaneedling to stimulate um, cellular regrowth, so they'll damage the surface layer of their skin, which will cause growth factors to head to that area, and then plus absorption. And someone like Spencer Cobrin would actually talk, even though there's medical studies that show that like stuff like like um, microneedling and greatly increases absorption, people are people tend to people can sometimes argue against the research and say that it's got a flaw in it, it's got a bias in it for this and that reason. But um, for the most part, derma rolling is not a bad idea. Minoxidil, finasteride is really and ketoconazole is like the three golden you know tips for to to yes. And people who do this at a young age can really intervene in the process for life. And some people can have, most people will have a greatly, um, greatly decrease the progression of their hair loss over time. And it'll make them an ideal candidate for, for hair transplant surgery, which is a whole other conversation. So we need to like 
put some like the list of the things in here like you gotta pass it yeah sure i put on the description and also i gotta make sure that i i bought i know that you say like don't mix uh, and all that stuff but i'm taking biotin which is fine i mean hair and nails and skin whatever fine. but biotin is the same that. argument right it's, it's the same argument as saw palmetto we really don't have any proof it works um it helps a little bit but you're not going to reverse so like you're going to increase you're going to increase the health of your hair sure but you're not going to re- you're not going to be able to fight Andro ba- androgenetic alopecia. Someone who's a nor with six with a completely bald head can take all the biotin in the world. It's not going to make a difference, in my opinion. So the, it, it, so the reason, the reason, my reasoning behind uh, taking these things is okay. I think that I know I know based on conversation with you and other people and information that I've, I've researched that I've done that it is very hard to get from bald to like let's grow hair yes it's a lot easier to prevent losing hair so as i'm exactly 30 years old i i haven't you know i i have good amount of hair at least i'm doing these things as early you know as, as possible as i decided to to do this to to maintain what i have improve the quality of what i have and then do other things that then it might be more complicated and things to, to be able to to grow but but you know, hundred percent. Taking a taking a state, a couple of stages at a time, right? And and I really want to do the fina, finasteroid, finasteroid. Correct, uh, correct, okay. finasteroid. That, you said that that one is not something that you can just buy over the counter, right? You need to definitely get a prescription not. For that one. You need to get a prescription, yes. So I need to. Yes. Do, it is in my. I gotta make sure that I put it on top of my to-do list. Yes, I, I and and for, for <laughs> and for and for those listening, you can buy. So what's commercially available for hair loss is something called Propecia. They've just rebranded and upped the price. If you want to save a ton of money, you get the Proscar five milligrams, and you ask the doctor to prescribe this. You break up Proscar into four, and you save orders of magnitude on your cost. Now, just one more quick point here. Uh, your pharmaceutical, your your pharmacy, like this is above people who even do like who are in the pharmaceutical industry. These are above even doctors. They'll always recommend the generic. If you go, I'll look online. What Merck would cost? I would probably tell you it might cost twenty to thirty times more for the name brand. So the so Merck's patent on finasteride expired. So now any company can make their own generic product. Now, in a, in a drug, there's something called a pharmacophore and an oxycophore. One is, and it's pretty much how you break down the construct. So one of them is responsible for the active ingredient, the molecular structure that is finasteride and the, the delivery structures. And then one of them is just, and the other one is just all the additional information. That's not necessarily crucial. So in order to create a drug that's considered generic, there's a list of criteria that you have to meet. However, it's a very intricate process in terms of exactly, you can even absorb the molecule, but that molecule might not enter into the stream it needs to go into. It might not go through the processes it needs to get to to finally get to your scalp and avoid the hair loss process. So people who even, and it's, it's anecdotal. Anecdotal just means that it's more of just a person's account rather than a scientific evidence. But it, there's a lot of anecdotal evidence that people who switch because they go, oh, I've been taking Merck, but now I can get the generic. They switch to the generic, and then they, they, they then they notice their hair loss starts coming back really aggressively. But they're still both taking finasteride. This is why people who take people will rather pay eighty to hundred dollars for fifteen days worth or thirty days worth of medication rather than pay literally two or three dollars for the generic drug. There's a reason for it. So that's just some information for you to equip yourself with, especially if you're already taking the name brand. But yeah, people will go to people will rec- recommend that their doctor puts in so they can tell their pharmacist, I don't want the generic, I want the name brand. If you live in Canada, it's much, much cheaper. If you live in America, it's a little more expensive. However, if you have a job and you know it's not it's not gonna hit the, the bank too much, and it's your hair, it's your looks, it's your confidence. So for some people, they're willing to pay way more, and um, you know everyone makes their own decisions based on what they can afford and where their priorities are. But yeah, I just wanted to plant that piece of information there. Yeah, so um, um, you basically yeah. uh, uh, were telling me that like you know I bought the the, the generic brand from Minoxidil. You know I, I got the curtain yeah. because I saw it. I saw some reviews, yeah, but but so, but yeah. that generic brand has not that specific compound has not gone through FDA trials. 
So the data you're looking at in FDA trial is not the data that results from taking that specific liquid. You have to keep that in mind. Yeah, I know. That's why you told me, you yeah. told me about it. And th that's why it's a great clarification. And uh, I mean, I already bought it. I want to use it, whatever. I, I, I spilled yeah. a, a, quite, a, some, some, quite, a, a, quite a good amount of my first bottle because of the, I was, uh, I, I'm like putting it on and I have it in my hand and then I'm like doing Good. this and like, I was like, ah, well, maybe. That's yeah, not yeah, to be. It, it gets a little, it's a little greasy. It gets a little greasy too, but so, so, so now let's make this conversation a little more interesting. This is what's FDA approved, however, and the honestly, the industry of what, what works and what ethical doctors recommend has started to shift a little bit. So the, unfortunately, a lot of people recommend a lot of junk None of it works. You watch something on Instagram, how to cure baldness. If that was the case, you wouldn't be hearing about it on Instagram in a reel or in a paid ad. You'd have top celebrities using it. You'd see people who are completely bald to regrow their hair. It's all a bunch of garbage. There's a very few things that work. and These are them. And everyone else will promise you the world. However, we're finding different ways to deliver the medication that does work. So, Finasteride itself is a pretty big molecule and getting it to absorb topically is a little more difficult. But what's FDA approved is oral minoxidil, oral finasteride and topical minoxidil. And now you're seeing a flip. So there are people are not people are doing both. So people are doing oral minoxidil and topical finasteride. In fact, I was looking online and I've seen doctors starting to recommend topical dutasteride. So what we spoke about earlier now now, it's good to understand at least the mechanisms because when I use, when I talk about different medications, you can actually start to see a dissociation of why one is better than the other. Dutasteride was the medication I told you that blocked both enzymes that produce DHT that attacks your hair follicles. And what we've noticed is when you, talk, when you, when you tackle both, you see tremendous differences in hair loss. Unfortunately, it's just not commonly used because there are the, the, the side effects are serious and they're important. However, for whatever reason, using it topically seems to be a little, you know, you're directly applying it to the site of, of that needs action or what, whatever. So um, people are now prescribing topical dutasteride as well, which is incredible. So, but you know, in terms of what doctors seem to be comfortable with prescribing now is, is topical Topical finasteride, topical uh, minoxidil. Sorry, it's confusing. And oral minoxidil, and or, and oral <laughs> finasteride. No, but why I'm telling you this foo is because when you put on minoxidil, it's kind of gross. It makes your hair shiny. It right? Uh, does it feel weird when you put it on your hair? Uh, Twice a day. I mean, it's oil in, in my hair. I mean, I'm, yeah, it's, it's unpleasant. Always... And the, and then especially yeah. like if it gets to my like here and all that. It's Taste like, funky. It's not, it's not good. Right. Yeah, it's not good job. Yeah. Right. So the thing about taking oral minoxidil is that it'll increase your hair growth everywhere in your body. Um, but at the same time, it can help with your beard. It can help with the hair on your head. So definitely something to consider. Now, if you want to get, we can talk about the world of hair transplantation. So that, that one, do you know, I think we should do another podcast after that. <laughs> right. this is you have self questions. Podcast. Go through them. You yeah. Know, yeah. yeah. I, I, I'm, I, I'm trying to like digest all this. I, we definitely, I'm thinking uh, together we're gonna get it. We're gonna define these terms, spell them, get some links and things. No problem. I, I need to. I'm. I know that I have to like. Okay, let me watch this again. Let me study yeah. this because it's so much that. Yeah. I, and I've talked and you, to, to you about this before, so it's this is not even the first time I'm hearing it, and it's still right. it's just one of those that it's like okay, I got some awareness now. Uh, I understand all these terms. It's like, okay, yeah, I'm trying to keep up with them. Like, I don't remember half of them. Uh, it's, it's, right. it's tough. So yeah, it's, it's, it's a little scientific and, and jargony. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But the transplant part is honestly the most stable solution, but there's a lot of risks and whatnot, which we can discuss at another time. But you're, like, your hair looks great, man. You look amazing. You look young. You look healthy. And I think that's a part of that proactive mentality. And there certainly is a stigma where guys are scared to talk about hair loss. Who cares? Right. Um, yeah. And yeah. And you never know when it creeps up on you. You see people who are like 40 full head of hair. You see them 41 and you're like, what the what happened to you? Um, it can. So that's why like I turned 30 and I went to through like I know it's just a number, but I just it, it hit me like a like a like a train. It was like, OK, I'm 30. I, I, I 
I broke up with my relationship because I was like, look, this is not a long term thing that I want. I started working on my safe heavily. I started like, okay, mm -hmm. like, let me start planning for hair loss. I, I eat different. Like, I, I do so many things. Good for you. It's like, it kind of hit me. It kind of hit me. And, and, and I know it's just a number, but it was just like, you know, I got to the third floor, people would say, right? And I'm like, I, I've been working on myself for, for, for since I started, Good for you. especially, I mean, all my life, but since I started the, the entrepreneurial journey, that's when like the self-development is, is almost full. And presentation is important. Right? It's extremely mm -hmm. important. And then that's one thing that, you know, uh, Ryan Pineda says and, and, and lives and is an embodiment of it. He had no hair. Uh, like, let's just focus in on, on the, the facial hair. And the beard. Like one of the yeah. biggest, you know, take, take a beard. And then he started growing it and he has a beard. Like, I mean, he grew a beard from nothing to now he has a beard, a decent beard. And, and he just he took biotin? Uh, and Maxil? He tried, I'm calling bullshit. He tried, other things. he tried other things too. So he might have said that he is pointing it out to that, but maybe it's a delayed reaction from other things that he did because he tried a bunch of things. So I don't he, know. Does he take minoxidil orally? Does he take something? Yeah, because uh, last, he said topical minoxidil or biotin uh, orally. And good for him. I mean, I, that's not something that's commonly heard at all. So, so yeah, that's I interesting. Know, I don't know if it's, there's other things too, right? That are right, right. That. But, so for me, I just saw that and then commanding more respect. I dreamed to have a beard all my life. I was like, look, I, can I can I do that so I can command more respect? Can I also at the same time like, okay, let me prevent my hair loss and and deal with that? Like, so that that's it. Is I I just want to. Look but but looking at you right now, looking at you right now, I I don't know if that I I'm guessing now that you're telling me all this that that's the natural state of your beard when it grows out. It looks like you have a big beard, you have a thick beard, and you just decided to. Just cut it, shave everything else and grow the goatee. So, you know, in my, you know, we tend to like the things that we can feel insecure about, we think it's called the spotlight effect. We think that everyone else is, is the first thing people notice about us. When I look at you, the last thing that goes through my mind, and it's almost self fulfilling when you tell me about it, and now I look at it, but it's the last thing on my mind to think that you don't have a commanding presence because you don't have a fully grown beard. So one part of this aspect is you should be confident and do whatever you need to feel confident. At the same time, I, I you should realize, I, I know, I know you have that energy. I'm speaking to the people listening too. Yeah. The people listening because everyone relates. Talking about this. Look, I got my neck like thing wrong. Oh my God. Scrap this. No. Oh, I didn't even, I didn't even notice that either. Oh uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm looking. I'm looking at that goatee. It's just yeah, everything. Else, everything else is secondary. So yeah, I know, man. But 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 I love that you're actually doing something about it, and I love that you're so confident that you're willing to put it on camera and you're willing to go on Instagram and put it on reels because definitely I think it's it's something that you know women have so much at their disposal. They can put on makeup. They can do a whole bunch of stuff. They can completely change their looks. Guys, we can grow our beard. We can cut our hair, and that's pretty much as far as it goes. And we can try some new clothing, but. You know, we want to shift it up and get a new pair of glasses or whatnot. But um, yeah, growing a beard is to some people it's important. And um, yeah, and I want, to I, something. I want to add something too is that I also like I'm a strategic marketer, right? Like that that's what I do. And and uh, I thought about it. You know what? Like I'm I'm just gonna document my journey because I know this is something that a lot of people will relate to. I want to right. do it anyway, so might as well just put a little bit of effort on recording it, get people through the journey. I got a lot of people that be like, hey, if it works for you, I'm trying it. So they already tracking mm -hmm. me, see me doing this thing. So once I figure it out, I got a bunch of people that are gonna that be following my journey. And and this Good. is such a, you know, a, a great thing because it not only helps me connect and, 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 and expose and, and, and give people that, that, look, they don't even have to try it. I'm doing it, I'm trying it. They live in it almost through me. But also, it opens conversations and gets people to get to know me. And now, if somebody wants uh, help with the marketing and wants help with, uh, with anything else that, that I'm, like, I'm well big into, like self development in general, and and they want to join me, be part of my community of things, then then this is a great way to to get into these people. So that's how I think. So I want to vote good for you. Those thoughts and make yeah. Really good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, the way I see it is you're a giver. You give quality, you give value, and that's your precursor to building good relationships and establishing trust. And I think that's brilliant. And it's why I love having you in my ecosystem. It's been nothing but a pleasure. 
Um, but yeah, you know, I'm happy to even, you know, I know this was a little more of a formal conversation talking about the underlying mechanisms and a little bit of the science behind hair loss. But on a, yeah, we, we have it's a good conversations. We, when we have more conversations, I agree because we're going to keep talking about this. Then we can just say to people, hey, if you want to get into like the nitty gritty nerdy stuff of, of right. like the, the hair loss, go go watch this episode. Right. And now right. this episode is recorded already. So I think this is this is a great. Episode yeah. To, to and, and, and one more thing to before we wrap up here is anecdotally, but one of the things that seem to have a tremendous effect on your hair is low glycemic index. Eating, you said you eat healthy. Um, I myself do two things. I don't eat processed sugar. I've cut that out for nearly a year. And I fast between 17 to 19 hours a day. So I do something called intermittent fasting. Okay. I start off doing 14 hours. Oh, really? I start off doing 14 hours and now I'm even sometimes dabbling with 20, but I definitely don't go lower than 17 hours. And never, never like putting yourself in starvation mode is one of the I do. key I do. tenets. Um, and what's so. his name? David Sinclair. Oh, no, I have like a religious rule. It's it's a religion of mine. It's like I do not break my fast um, ever. And yeah, it, it's almost like I, I've come to learn I'm addicted to mental pain. So I love running. It's why I love <laughs> fasting. I love what my brain tells me. I, just, I just want to put my two cents on this. The reasoning behind the fasting, obviously, I it helps me because when I eat, I eat a lot. Healthy, but I eat a right. lot. And also sometimes I, I don't feel bad not eating healthy because I eat healthy most of the time. And that's why I'm in a decent shape. And then the, one of the biggest reasons for is for efficiency. I only eat two times a day, sometimes just once, but like mainly two times a day. So I cut one time that I don't have to cook, clean, all that stuff. So like I work harder. So I, when I'm fasting, it's because I'm working. And I, it's not until I get the hunger pain gets bad enough to get me out of my ass and like okay let me start working i need to eat then but i've learned to 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 like i'm busy like i don't feel it i'm not like super hungry so then that's when like 18 hours ha go by and i'm like oh okay cool let me go eat now and it's it feels efficient for me that's that's so it's interesting like, oh, but efficiency is a play for me too right for me it's like i have discipline in so many other aspects of my life and getting control over my eating habits was just a failed process over and over and like now that i have complete control over my eating hab eating habits my brain processes food so differently it took me like four months of fasting for it to kick in where it's like i get those endorphins and i get that stimulation even when i'm Far, when I'm the farthest point into my fast, between 14 to 17 hours in, I honestly feel so good. And the worst, I feel the worst in my day right after I eat. Um, and I get full so quickly. Dude, yeah. I crash so hard. That's why I love working while I'm fasting, right. working out, doing all. And then I eat, and then I just want to sleep. So then I've been right. battling that. Let me see if I have it here. It's I got like this like unicity, like unimate or matcha or something. Because if not, I just crash. So then I, I got right. that, that like food coma, and it's like oh my god, <laughs> like, I just got a nap. Yeah, yeah. So I just have to take something. So I get it. I get it. Right, right. So yeah, you know, and to tie this back to the hair stuff. Um, undoubtedly my hair feels so much healthier now that I don't eat sugar and I fast and there's a ton of stuff online where people promise by reducing inflammation um, the glow glycemic index diet specifically it's an it's an it's a diet produced it's, it's a Harvard based diet it's called the low glycemic index where they rate foods but pretty much anything that causes inflammation sugars and whatnot should be avoided and people who do that for an extended period of time who can make that a natural part of their life increase and plus if you're on finasteride like those two things can work together powerfully and this is a little bit of anecdotal. This isn't backed by, by, by trials and whatnot, but when anecdotal becomes powerful, when you have a lot of people promising by it, not just one guy on an Instagram ad, but yeah, <laughs> yes. cool, man. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, man, this has been a great conversation. One of those uh, Pleasure is mine. It's, it's, it's to study this. Like you gotta like study yeah. this. And it's great that uh, I love having people that, that know a lot about any topic that I'm interested in, and I'm definitely interested in this. So thank you for for providing me this. It's my pleasure. It's my absolute pleasure. You've given me so much too, James. You've given me so much too. So, it's honestly the least I can do. And and, I mean, if we're gonna keep giving each other value for for a long time. Clearly, I mean, we're being like it's been like two years now or so, and uh, it's not, not two years. It's been like four years, five years. 
I'm insulted that you don't even know how long we've been friends. It's not two years, James. <laughs> no, it's not. Because we have a good relationship. Because I started my journey. I've been full time doing entrepreneurship just three years. We met more than two years ago. I can check the first date, but we might have increased our collaboration. We might have increased our communication up for two years. But yeah. But anyways, yeah. you know, it's been a while. Let's just keep it at that. It's been, yeah. it's been a couple of years, and uh, it's yeah. been it's been good. So so yeah, man. I, I can't wait to. Uh, Record more content with you. Get more to this, and then ask. Yeah, it's up on a call. More of it. See some changes in my hair. Yeah. <laughs> I want. I want to see you look like. I want to see you look like a caveman the next time we talk. It's just yeah, this long yeah, hair, yeah, beard. Like, let me see if I can get some hair in here. I get some like like glow like bald spots that are getting better. But also it's because less anxiety. I have less anxiety. I'm eating better. Right. Because uh, I, I I get anxiety and I just take photos. Better. Do you take photos? Because it's much easier to get, oh, to notice video. progress. Look at my Instagram. Take video. Look at my Instagram. Right, right. All that there. So everything. Good for you. There. Good so, for you. Good for you. you. Know, that's why I put it. I document all this stuff. Cause it's like, look, let me throw it in. If if you look, um, I I was looking at my interview. It was a, almost a, a year ago, exactly, a, a little bit over, with uh, Sean Cannell from Think Media. I interviewed him for for my podcast, and I was looking, and I had like some bald spots and stuff. And I remember like having like some anxiety and things like that. So like, I was like, damn, like I don't have that anymore. Cool, right? Like, and I look at my eyebrows and things. So. It's been a lot of like anxiety too, and food and all that. So there's so many different components to this, but um, you know, good I, stuff. I keep, I'm gonna keep documenting everything. Look, I literally go live while I cook. I I do. I am doing like as much documentation of my journey. So just oh, look, Instagram is my main social media. So follow me on Instagram if you wanna keep track with, with my stuff. And you, your main social media, main stuff. Where can people? Get uh, I'm pretty active on Facebook and LinkedIn, but it's everything is Mikey Perez, M I K E Y P E R E S. I'm active on on inst on uh, Instagram as well. Let me grab. It's just oh yeah, that's that's pretty much what I'm active on. <laughs> okay, perfect. So man. Uh, uh, I'll, I'll have the links in the description and all that. We'll, we'll get together so we can. This description has to be a little bit more uh, powerful than the usual ones because we. I want to put a. Lot, we gotta put the disclaimer. We gotta put the the explanations. I want to put some links and stuff because this is one of those that I know that I'm gonna ref, refer to myself plus uh, send people to this and and I know it's gonna be cemented as like, okay, we recorded this. Then what's got ha happened three months six months you know like we're gonna keep recording this i'm, I'm excited for this journey <laughs> great great i'm excited to follow up and be a part of it perfect so uh, this was mikey and Fu. this is us signing off peace thanks for listening to moments with foo with your host foo Please leave your feedback and visit strategicadvisorboard.com to get the latest and greatest business advisement on the planet. Follow us on social media for updates and we will see you on the next episode.